Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano Lives at Dawn. I remain Shadow Fury 333, your host, and we are going to have a, to another 2v2 match. Like I said before, the tournament is Saturday, October 31st. 2v2 tournament. Go and sign up because it will be fun, I'm sure. But we need people to sign up so that there's actually a nice big tournament. Anyway, this match will be Stumi and Naki versus Solano and Stomus and Failer on Zed. Which is a map that I don't think will work in 2v2. I'm just laying it out there. I do not think this will work in 2v2. I'm curious to see if it will. I'm just a little doubtful due to its size and the fact that the clustering is really designed for 1v1. However, with the way that the economy works, the economy sharing works, it's possible. At least it won't be like icy run bad, but it doesn't seem promising. We'll see though. So Amph and Shield versus Shield and Cloaky. No surprises there. At this point, I'm pretty sure everyone's figured out that this is not a great vehicle map. It can work okay, but it's tricky. Like, vehicles in this map only have the top little reflective area at the top. That's it. Bots have basically everything. And spiders have cliff edges, but no one's playing spiders right now. So bot pathing is very powerful in this map. Vehicles are, at best, a quick rush strategy to try to use, I guess, Scorcher power. And the fact the Scorchers are pretty powerful. To try to win with that before your opponent gets map control. Otherwise, you're kind of hooped. I'm surprised gunships aren't being used as a starter factory, because this map is pretty good at defending that play, but I guess neither player really wanted to go for that, especially in 2v2. It's like, both 2v2 and a map that's not terribly difficult to defend with. At least in terms of, you know, you might have one person with an aggressive factory to put units out, and then another person with gunships in the back. But no, nope, not happening. What is happening is some harassment to no avail. So much for that. What was that one duck? That's metal donation. So how much metal did they donate? Like 26. That's half a duck. Not actually that much of a difference, but hey, it's half a duck. Especially given that one of these ducks is almost dead and there's no water to work from. So they can't easily heal up, but they will heal up eventually, assuming it doesn't die. Once again, though, I mean, Mackie we saw last game is really good at expansion. I mean, they're they're solid. They know what to do. They know how to build up. And this is no exception. They are the one expanding the most. A few metal extractors here and here and there from Stumi. Actually, at this point, Mackie and Stumi are about even. They're they're both expanding pretty well. They're both pulling their weight, and they're both expanding faster than Red Team, though not by much. And Red Team is putting quite a bit of pressure, or at least trying to get out of here. They can. Oh, they can break out of here. The last bandit will win this fight, and oh, more bandits coming in from the blue team, though. So me and Mackie not able to harass, and probably will get counter pressure on the northwest side here. But it looks like they are instead going to be pressuring the center, building up towards the center, pretty much the opposite way of blue team, which is expected. Not building up over to the northeast. Blue team has already set up a bandit here. Mackie's bandit just hanging out, waiting for an opportunity to protect something. Just waiting there. Just waiting there with not quite bated breath. Wants to catch a duck. Two bandits won't be too much more than just information. I mean, if that gets if that gets expanded to, and it's not something that red team does blindly, then it will probably just be killed pretty quick. But at least they'll know. But it looks like radar's not showing it, so red team has no idea. They could send a worker there blind, but they're taking the center pretty hard. So blue team right now, while they actually do have an economic advantage, and they do have some pretty good position for coming in for harassment, they are losing the center pretty quick. Interesting Zeus-Warrior combination. I agree with the Warrior. The Zeus, I guess, is a tank. Especially for the Duck. But that was expensive. And now that belongs to Mackie. I mean, right now, Mackie... Oh, wait. I got everything backwards! Everything I said about Mackie... Never mind, that was Selena Stomus. Selena Stomus is the one... Oh, I flipped that around, because Mackie was blue last game. I'm sorry. Selena Stomus was the one who... I don't know why I didn't think that these were relevant. Selena Stomus. They are the ones who are doing a bit of damage here, but Mackie and Stumi... They didn't quite start as quickly. They they were the ones trying to put pressure here. But they are now getting in. I am so sorry. I... I apologize for that. That was completely... That was off base. But yeah, so flip everything I said around. Everything I said about Mackie, it was actually about Solano Stomus. Everything I said about Stumi was actually about failure up until about a minute ago when I finally worked out who was who. 
Why that took me so long is would just be just me making excuses. That's that was my bad. Anyway, so Stumi and Maki getting in the center pretty quick. It was some of the stomas that had that nice little bandit there, which would have been handy, but it attacked a bit too soon. So right now, red team basically has this entire side, and blue team, they've lost their economic advantage. They, wait. No, never mind. Red team lost their advantage. I don't know why I expect blue to be on the left side for some reason. Red team had an economic advantage, and now it's about even. How did they? Whatever. They could just get this. They should just get this section here over the east, center east. Grab those two mexes. Blue team has already had them for a while. If red team can grab those, they have the center. They have a bunch of reclaim, which they're surprisingly not taking. Oh. Are they? Nope. They are not taking the trees. Those trees are actually pretty valuable. That's a lot of metal and energy. Mostly energy, really. Like, metal and energy in those trees? That's a gold mine. You just reclaim those trees and produce, and that's it. You don't have to worry about building more power plants while those trees are being reclaimed. It's such a perfect reclaim. It's extremely powerful. Like, reclaim is always good, but reclaim that gives you both energy and metal is basically the holy grail of reclaim. If you can get that, then... And in this map, you have plenty of it. You get that, you add build power to your factory, and you just get build power no matter what. It'll just work. So... This point, Maki, is now taking a bit of pressure, and that was... Sorry, that was, in fact, Failer who was doing the Zeus warrior combination, and at this point, getting under Stuma's commander, got a commander, that's what they definitely want. Now, Zeus warrior has I mean, quite a bit of power, especially with these boys getting quite close. The thing is, warrior loses to boys, but Zeus can take a lot of damage before having to worry about anything, and the thug support as well. Both of those, just getting those warriors in for the damage, the sheer damage. At this point... At this point, it's just going to be failing in some of the stomachs. If they can take the center, I mean, Maki, Maki and Stumi are a bit behind economically. They have the reclaim on the commander, but it's not going to last long. The relentless assault from blue team is per just presenting way too many problems. And there goes... Oh, there's Maki's commander down. There's the, most of the reclaim down. And, ooh, clever, nicely placed Roach. They got rid of a warrior or two. Actually, ooh, got rid of the sharpshooter! Oh, wow! I, where's the debris for that? Okay, anyway, I, I saw the debris for that, but yeah, it looks like I got rid of the sharpshooter somewhere. Ah, uh, here it is. Yes! Killed Failer's sharpshooter. That is a big deal. That is going to help a bunch. Once these dirtbags get in here, these boys will actually have a nice support to work with. Ooh, that's 320 roach metal. That is not something you want to lose. That warrior... That warrior's death was worth it. Or at least it will be if the territory can be taken. That's still reclaim. That's still open reclaim. And Mackie is not let, Or Stumi, rather, is not letting it go. Which they shouldn't. Both teams are being very, very careful to make sure that they get all the reclaim they can during the fight, which is exactly what they should do. Very well played. And at this point, the economy is very even. The production is pretty much perfect. A Grizzly coming up for red team. Blue team going for fusion plan. Not going for any sort of factory or... Strategy switch. Another sharpshooter on the way. Or failure. So then Stomus has not been constructing anything recently. In fact, they're starting to excess a little... Or getting to the point where they could be accessing pretty soon if they're not careful. That was a major mistake from Southern Stomus. And that may end up allowing Stumi and Maki to get the firepower and the size of army they need to be able to get out of this. Because right now, Stumi and Maki are... Not doing super well, but they are doing well enough. They're holding the line. And Solar the Stomus not building units when they need to is... What? They can... Oh. Ouch. Okay, that's weird. Conch got stuck in there. Yeah, so Red Team, they're... They don't really have the center super strongly, but they are taken. But this is one of the reasons I was a bit con concerned about this map. Because it tends to bog down into the center, as we're seeing right now. The center tends to grind out, and while there are ways of getting around and providing support, flanking support like this, which... 
Was that sharpshooter? No, that sharpshooter is placed over here. But yeah, there's nice ways of providing flanking support, which can be very handy. It's not that easy to break out of this. I mean, right now, red team could potentially go along the northwest side here. There we go. And then flank from there. But they don't have the units to even hold the line directly easily, let alone flank. Like, as it is, they have to be clever about unit usage in order to hold the line right now. Flanking on top of that would just be impossible. Right now, oh, how close. Mackie, 15 seconds away from that Grizzly, but that Grizzly is still... That's a Grizzly, a huge unit. Very, very weighty. Stewie's Felon holding quite a bit of the line here, but that Sharpshear is already in play, so the counter already exists. Like, this is still a problem. It has to kill everything it can before the Sharpshear gets to it, which will be right about now. And that should... Is it going to fire? Oh, he needs a clear line of sight. Does not have that clear line of sight. Kills off a worker in the way. Very useful ban or very useful convict there. Extremely useful convict. It's exactly what it needed to have. But now it's going to be a clear. Sh oh, is it? Is it going to be a clear shot? Looks like it. And now well, it's going to try. Nope. Thug gets in the way. Very nice bodyguarding. I'm not sure if Stumi is actually trying to bodyguard that, but they are. They are. It's working. So far, that's two shots the Felon has not taken. That's, the Felon's been alive for 25 extra seconds. Oh, 18 seconds, sorry. Four, 36 extra seconds compared to what it could otherwise have been alive for. Had it been hit. So that Convict and Thug did not die in vain, and now the Sharpshooter just needs to be found. No dirtbags in the... Or there's one dirtbag on the field, not many though. Not enough to easily find the Sharpshooter. No flanking going on either, no additional factories. This is entirely down to the Grizzly Felon. One of the Felons has gone down, the other Felon's still alive. Or, well, okay, the other Felon's still alive. A back of Felon already on the way. So the Stone was coming in with the Racketeers. That will be very useful for getting rid of this Grizzly. Just stun out that Grizzly, hit it hard. But at this point, they're, they've they lost the center. Red team has the center, blue team needs to hold it. Dante coming for the blue team as well as the Racketeers. Only two of them, or only one in play so far. And that center has been lost. Well and truly lost. Nice retreat from Red Team. Tactically getting, tactical retreat, getting out of the area of the Firestorm. They are going to lose a few units in the process, though. Mostly Convicts and Thugs. But still, that's not good. They need that for the shielding. The Felon's out in the open. If that Sharpshooter can get... Oops. Sorry. If that Sharpshooter can get in the way of that Felon... But no, it's going for the Grizzly. It's very focused on that Grizzly. And the Felon can't really deal with the, the Dante. That's the problem. These heavy units like this, they cannot... Like, Felons cannot deal with heavy units because Felons will drain every shield in the ball and then the heavy unit will counterattack and win. It is extremely powerful to do that. And it looks like a duck flank is going to be coming in here. Yes, indeed. Round the back. Only one Lotus. This is going to be trivial to deal with. Red team getting a nice flank going on here, having more or less secured the center or at least broken up the center's trenches. Really simplified down the unit count, so coming with the flank, now they don't have to worry about a giant army having destroyed it. They still have to worry about the Dante, but that's really it. That's all they have to worry about for now. The economy's still even, and Mackie going for an air factory while the ducks come in for harassment. No, the ducks turning back! That, I think, was a mistake. There should have been enough ducks to be able to get through that Lotus and the defenders, but apparently Mackie was not so confident. Regardless, they are going to be getting some probably bombers fairly soon. Unfortunately, they did give away that attack, but it doesn't look like... Okay, it does look like there's some concern, and Sylvanus Nomus is going to be setting themselves up in a way that they can block off any further attacks. Though that will reduce the army in the front, I don't think it will reduce it significantly. The main army is this. Like, these three units right here. Mostly the Dante. But the Dante is getting hit with some disarm. We'll take about 10 shots to take it down, but that's not going to be too hard to do. Looks like there's about two Racketeers in for Stumi. That will be easy enough. And a couple more shots will stop that Dante. Well, at least stop him from attacking. And is there a Thunderbird on the way? No indication of that yet. Mackie has not yet finished the Air Factory. But when they do, probably going to go for that. So the Stomas and Fail are getting a huge amount of reclaim. Absolutely massive. They lost the center briefly, but they have now very firmly retaken it. 
with a very strong counter attack. The Dante finally stunned out, but what does it matter? Really, I mean, there's not much follow-up to get rid of the rest of these forces. And while the Rakteers are doing a pretty good job here, there's just so much going on that... So much, such a large army coming in, and these units not moving up to flank. The thugs not moving in to flank. I don't know why, but at least there'll be some, some useful for defense. Not sure why they are moving into the flank, though. And Shadow's coming in here. Or sorry, Raven's rather coming in here. Why did I forget that? Raven's coming in. I don't know why this is happening. Thunderbirds will be the only choice, and that's not the choice made. The choice made, indeed, is actually surrender. And I can lose this one, and that was... Yeah, that was a map that I didn't think would work in 2v2. That center bog down actually didn't feel that grindy. I gotta be honest, even though it was a center bog down, it was a bit of a trench war, it didn't feel that grindy. It felt like one play would have done it, and one play could have easily done it, and one play did do it, in fact. I mean, there was some interesting stuff going on, and the, I kind of wish the flanking was used more often. Those thugs there could have been used more, but at the same time, it was also the lack of production of Solonostomus at one point. So, uh, granted, that didn't matter a huge deal. By that point, Failure had an army that was doing just fine. But yeah, it looks like basically just losing that Grizzly was a huge... Like, losing the Grizzly and the Felons, that was the backbone of the army for Red Team. Once they lost that, it was kind of done. Especially with the Dante bearing down on them. Anyway, that was... Actually better than I expected. So, hey, congratulations. I was impressed. Granted, I'm not the hardest person to impress in the world, but this map has rather disappointed me, I'm afraid. But hey, this is actually not too bad overall, so I guess it broke even. Next game, I believe, is going to be on a map that is a bit more generally respected. No, it's not! It's going to be a Moon Q10X. Never mind. But we'll see how that goes, too. That's okay for 2v2, but it's a weird map nonetheless. So Moon Q10X coming up next, Mackie and Failure versus Clone and Uncle Kaga. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.